Hi everybody, welcome to Gumpa TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hobbling Japan. This is episode 130. 130. 130. Uh, speaking of brought to you by Hobbling Japan, they're sponsoring the current contest we have on yeah. Hobbling TV. For anyone who hasn't heard of the contest, we're running a really big modeling competition. Yep. There is a link underneath the video. Yep. If you want to join and you have time, so yep. I think it ends the beginning of January. It's still like three months left or so. So yeah, you can still be building a lot. Yep. And uh, from what we've seen, it's great. Thank you very much yep. to everyone. People are already starting to submit. Yes, yeah. um, but we have we got lots stuff. of stuff, yeah, lots of stuff to stuff. show you actually. Uh, well, I actually have a big pile of boxes over here. You can't see yet because we're trying to keep keep tidy this desk here. But I've got a Plamalooza. What do I want to say? Gun Plamalooza. I got tons of stuff here that Van I just dropped off today, and I see you've got a couple of things there to talk yes, about. Yes, I got a. I felt after last week I didn't give justice. Yeah. To uh, my Valkyrie. Yeah. So I've actually gone ahead and put on the stickers and I'll talk about that later. Okay. I'm also going to talk about my Nutcracker. I haven't done anything on him yeah. because life is complicated yeah. and I'll get into busy, that busy, later. Busy, busy, busy. And okay. I also have some new stuff to show, but where would you like to uh, I think we should start with that stuff that just got up on our site. We have pre-orders up now and uh, one that really caught my eye, Ryan, is the Lamborghini. So Ryan, if I recall correctly, I think Lamborghini uh, unveiled their Veneno, as it's called, at the, was it the Geneva Auto Show? Well, correct me if I, I saw it on the Top Gear. Yeah, yeah. And it, they had it on at the track because it's not street legal. Yeah, the Stig was driving? Yeah, well, I, yeah, I think the Stig was someone. It's all carbon fiber and even the interior is carbon fiber and yeah. the seats are actually bolted. Like the padding is just, it's not a seat, it's just yeah. the cushion. Yeah, yeah. It's been bolted on the front. It is a sexy beast. It is a monster of a car. And, uh, you know, when we went to uh, uh, the Shizuoka Hobby Show, Two years ago now, they had an actual Lamborghini mm. uh, Aventador there, and I thought that was beautiful. And then shortly after, they unveiled the Veneno, and I, I was blown away. Like, it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. And I'll never see one, because I think they're only making like two of them or three of them. But uh, come in December, you can get your hands on the Fujimi model kit version of it. So uh, just like the Aventador, you can actually uh, build you your own. Uh, I think the Veneno is too sexy for gun colors, <laughs> but it co probably would look good in char red though, I think. <laughs> it is a sweet beast. It's thing. unbelievable, that car. So I was uh, going through new stuff and I yeah. actually came across the Space Park Crab 03. Yeah. I just found it really cute and I put it up on Facebook and you know, they've got a lot of love. Yeah, um, well, it's, it's pretty cool looking. I mean, it's sci-fi in our sci-fi section, so I, you know, it's not like it's based on anything, but you can imagine these things being used, for example, on the moon and various other, you know, space exploration type uh, activities. It's definitely made to, to, uh, how do you say, transverse all yeah. these different types of environments. Yeah, it transforms it kind of. Yeah. We get attachments and it has this really cute face. So, uh, if this is actually from something, if someone could let us know. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is done by Wave and they always kind of do some interesting stuff yeah. from time to time. But uh, we should probably get on to what's just come in. Yeah, yeah, I got a whole pile of stuff here. All right, Ryan, we're going to start with the money shot, the Gunpla from Gunpla TV. And it is the bling bling gun in here. We have the uh, Gundam Astra 8 gold frame, Amatsumina. Now, uh, previous to this, we hadn't really seen any kind of gold Gundam in quite some time, aside from the Delta Gundam, which came out a couple years ago now, which is all plated. But this is not plated, because to do that would be quite expensive, considering they're trying to do like the frame parts. And this is actually kind of big for an HG. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And because of that, I want to open this guy okay. up and have a look at it. Now, I, I like the red frame and the blue frame, but the gold frame I actually don't have any experience with. I believe there's a 1-100 scale no-grade kit, but I haven't built that. But you can see that even the 144 scale, it's gonna come with these large pieces. These are for like the wings that you see on the back there. And it's interesting to note that the polycap runner is also the gold, similar to the uh, Strike Freedom HG, which gave you these, these gold-colored polycaps. And uh, of course, Foil stickers, this is an HD after all. Now, here's where we start to see some of the frame. You can see it's that gold that we're familiar with in the HD Strike Freedom and uh, maybe even the PG Strike Freedom. Some people call this kind of the lame gold. It's kind of just a yellow. You can kind of see uh, where the, the swirl, where the uh, plastic goes into the molding there. So what I decided that I'm going to do here, let's get a good shot of it here. Open it up, snap. There, can, you, can you see that? See all that not so much gold goodness? It's, it's, it's a folks gold. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to make it affordable. It is an HG kit after all. They're, they can't afford to mechie the entire thing. There's like at least three runners of gold. 
But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the old paint on the runner trick using the oh. spray can. And uh, I will actually paint this whole runner, all the old gold parts. I'll take it home and I'll assemble it uh, hopefully on Monday. And we'll come back in next week and we'll see uh, just how good this baby can look. All right, so that's my assignment this weekend. I, I, we have a long weekend again, for those of people who don't know. We had a long weekend last weekend, and I typhooned, so I couldn't do much of anything. We had so much water. And uh, now this long weekend, uh, I will be busy sa Saturday, Tokyo Game Show. <laughs> but I will uh, have some time Sunday and Monday, and I'm going to uh, be working on the gold frame. And Sid might have a surprise from the Tokyo Game Show, if it shows up. Mm, maybe. Maybe. All right, okay, next up. Evangelion. Now, uh, I think we saw these at the Shizuoka show as well. They were showing the, the new Evangelion. Uh, this one is pink. <laughs> yeah, it's from the EVA series. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of EVA love. Uh, I've, I've actually never built an EVA kit. I have not built one either. I probably should get around to it, but the, the pink one I probably wouldn't go for. But one thing I notice every time I look at these Evangelion is that where, um, you know, you look at a Gundam and it looks like a machine yeah. in its proportions, it's squarish. When you look at Evangelion, it looks like a person, yeah, right? Like it, it is. It's very organic, and I think that's part of the appeal for people who might not like. And also, the, I mean, the the, these kind of kits for anyone who's into the yeah. EVA series. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you're not into collecting the big. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Into, the, into collecting the figures, but are interesting yeah. to build it in the kits, which are actually quite a lot cheaper yeah. than. than the, for sure. The figures. Um, okay, this is the uh, production model custom type. 08B beta, whatever you want to call it. Now, this is my award for uh, best Evangelion box art. <laughs> I think it looks awesome. I really like it. And uh, this is the, hold on, let me get the number here Evangelion Production Model 02Y, or whatever that Latin is. And uh, again, it's got that organic type of feel to it. If you're building these kids, let us know. Um, yeah. We actually don't know how many people actually build the Evangelion. Well, we're still, we're still, you know, going to bring one on the show yeah, 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 at yeah. one point in time. Uh, the problem was when I decided, you know what, let's do Evangelion this week. I went outside the warehouse and they were all sold out. <laughs> so I had to wait. And but now from, with these two new releases. This is from the EVA Evangelion 3 movie. I believe so. So um, I don't even know yeah. if that's been released overseas yet. Uh, maybe not. No. Okay, now I have one more thing in my pile here. But Ryan, uh, it's going to be your turn now. What do you have there? The Gigalachi. Okay. TV. Now, um, if you've watched Ghost in the Shell, the TV series, mm -hmm. the movies, uh, these guys show up and they're yep. very cool. There's a great YouTube video out there if you want to see what they actually do. <laughs> um, yeah, let me uh, pop this open. Let's sure. have a look inside and see what we get. Okay. Here we have the Gigabachi AV 170 second scale mm -hmm. from the Ghost in the Shell show, as I mentioned before. Yeah. Let's have a look in the box, see what we get. So, well, we get the manual. And actually, you do get a couple of the tachikomi. Tachikomi, yeah. They're they're quite small. I'll just show them here. Oh, okay. So um, I guess it's all to scale. I was wondering what that blue runner was actually mm. when I when we first kind of glanced in the box. That's pretty cool, and it's pretty fine detail if you actually decide to spray paint it. You also do get a base, and um, this is probably the main part of the plane. So it's it's not that big mm -hmm. but I'm actually I'm quite interested in building this but I'll, I'll see if I can get around to it and here's your second touchy Komi touchy Komi hi and uh, yeah I'm a huge fan of Ghost in the Shell so uh, there we have it yeah um, oh and before I forget yeah. our good friend Robert mm -hmm. um, the Gundam guy 184 uh, he's actually made a really nice post of the unboxing of this yeah and I'll have another one with a built one so make sure oh, cool. you check out Hobbiting TV um, I'll put a link in the post anyway, so you can find it if you're interested about sure. this. Sure. Okay, I'll, well, I'll take this over here because okay. it's kind of cool. Um, now, Ryan, this is right up your alley. This next box. Yes, this, uh, next this box. is the next. This is the next uh, new style of Bandai Transformable Valkyrie, you know, original VF1S. This is the Roy Fockers suit. We love Roy Fockers. Everybody right? loves Roy Fokker, uh, as opposed to uh, Hikaru Ichijo or whatever his name is. And this one also has a suit part set as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd be interested to have someone build this, <laughs> just to find out what the differences are between this one and the I wonder if it's one. kind of this, the, the same model part for part and it's just a difference in the coloring and the, yeah. and the markings. I'm not sure. I, I uh, did not build the first one because that was Scott's baby. Yeah, no, Scott but, did it uh, and um, he had yeah. fun, yeah. to say the least. Uh, if anyone else has bought this and are actually building it, we'd love to hear from yeah, you. Let us know. Send us some pictures. The two, yeah. You can put it up in the group so, over there. 
Cool. All now, right. Uh, now it's my turn to talk about. It is your turn, Ryan. You know, I'm I'm, guy. I'm lean today. I was. Yeah, no, I have the, not. The typhoon messed everything the up. The typhoon. Well, you had the typhoon and the Tokyo Model yeah. Show. Oh, speaking of which, maybe we should Actually, talk about that next. Yeah, let's talk about the Tokyo Show. Okay. Um, it's not really sci-fi. It's not sci-fi, you know, gunpla type models, but it is plastic models. Yeah, there's and some cool stuff. There's there. some awesome stuff in yeah. these shows. So let's uh, let's get set up and we'll start with that. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I was at the the Tokyo Show, the yep. show with Brian and Scott. Yep. I wasn't presenting or anything. Of course not. I was in the background. Yeah. Directing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Big Side is where yeah. it's at. It's a crazy building. Yeah, this I love is, all the architecture yeah. on Odaiba and Big Side is, it, well, it's and noticeable it's because it's there, big. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, it's near there. Yeah. 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 Um, but, yeah, this is just a few things I found interesting. If mm -hmm. you want all the background to all the kids that are coming out, watch the video yeah, yeah. that Scott and Brian did. It's really good. Mm -hmm. um, I was just amazed because there was a Harley Davidson there, the big yeah. boy low. Yeah. And uh, this is the, the original bike that was at the show. And this is yeah. the replica. And it's crazy. <laughs> you can't even tell the difference. Yeah, you cannot. It looks the same. It's not the cheapest kit, but the amount of detail in there is nuts. Well, I think uh, in, in many cases the, with bike kits, because the scale is different from car kits, they're slightly bigger, you can pack in all of this mm -hmm. kind of detail and have something that looks absolutely sensational. And when you compare that to you know the, the real thing, it's hard to tell the difference sometimes. Absolutely, and Scott, um, uh, Brian actually looks closely at this bike, so check out the video, because he goes into in depth on what they actually do with the engine and all mm -hmm. the accessories and metal parts, and it is just nuts. Okay. But this is something which was cool. Hi, Itasha. Itasha. Now the sad thing was, <laughs> there was a couple of uh, the booth girls there yeah. in very sexy jumpsuits, just the right design. <laughs> Them. Oh Ryan! But uh, yeah, journalism know. fail. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, what was I doing? My like, eyes burn here. Yeah, and uh, the cool thing is, um, there's actually an RC version of this one. Oh okay. Which, uh, Cute. I don't know if we mentioned this or not before, but uh, in Japan these are called Itasha, yeah, itasha. with the Ita being painful. Basically, they're, they're tough to look at. Is what it is. <laughs> and, uh, Itai! But I wouldn't say no if someone wanted to give me a car. And no. I, the thing in Japan is like, it's not, if you do see an Itasha car, it's not like, oh, wow, well, that's, no. I mean, if you do it, you're not going to be frowned upon. Yeah, except yeah. that's the thing, like, uh, the people who do it, they spend a lot of money to oh, make their cars yeah. look that way, and, you know, you got to, Gotta show some respect for that kind of thing. Like I don't put that much money in my vehicle, but if I did, you know, I wanted people to be able to see it. Now this is um, I saw this in action. It's actually a drone uh -oh. that you attach a camera to. Mm -hmm. It was like seven thousand um, dollars. Mm. That's what they kind of quoted to us without the kind of camera or the camera attachment. Mm -hmm. It is kind of for surveillance. Yeah. And uh, we saw it in action, and the sound is just like drones. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so if you uh, seriously wanna spying people's windows <laughs> I this. I, hopefully the next generation will be a bit quieter because i think yeah. the girl will notice when there's this black thing interesting that when we we talk about surveillance and drones <laughs> you go right to <laughs> spying on girls hey, it's Japan. <laughs> i'm looking for uh, someone bin laden and you're flying <laughs> into your neighbor's window well this is your cheap you know this is <laughs> this is for domestics there you go well, there's lots of people who would love these in this country, but let's not go down that road. <laughs> Can you fit it under the skirt? No. <laughs> okay, next is, uh, well, the, what's this company name? Is it Tokyo Maori? Tokyo Maori. Now, there's some news. They won't be at our favorite show. Yeah, uh, they, the, they're at this show because it, um, they're kind of se separating it this year in Tokyo, whereas Tamiya was a big part of the model shows. Uh, now they're separating it to do their own kind of Tamiya type show mm -hmm. and now uh, next month will be um, Bandai and those kind of mm -hmm. sci-fi kids yeah, having their own uh, show at uh, Makuhari. So I'm not going to be able to see these guns, Ryan. I'm a, kind of a little bit sad. Yeah, and this particular AK-70 for you was really good looking. Yeah. They wouldn't let me touch it, <laughs> but uh, I could look at it. I, I asked them, uh, is there a gold version coming? But maybe <laughs> not. But uh, in a year's time, they'll all be back together again, so we can okay. do guns again. Yeah. Another cool gun we saw, which is this one. Oh, look at this thing. It's a Taver 21. Now you know this. Oh, you I know believe it's the Israeli assault rifle. Sweet. And uh, this gun should be in Battlefield 4. I just want to throw that out there. Which I will be playing on Saturday at the Tokyo oh, Game yeah. Show. <laughs> Boom! Just dropping that in there because I feel cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's sad we can't sell this stuff overseas, but yeah. you can understand why. Because it yeah. just looks like the real thing. It, yeah, they're so, so 
detailed and accurate down to like the millimeter and everything. If you pulled out an AK-70 for you, I'm sure in the States or in the <laughs> That would be it. <laughs> have something to say to you. Okay, now this is kind of cool. Like modeling in Japan is so diverse mm -hmm. that these are considered model kits because you actually do build them. They yep. sell all the different materials to assemble yep. them. Um, and uh, yeah, so you know, a lot of the ladies were into this. There was a big area set up yep. where you, know, you could make your own. And I just thought this is... Modeling for everybody. Modeling it's for it's interesting that they gave you that sign. It's English says "Do not eat," <laughs> which makes you makes you think that well, if I really wanted to, I could get away with eating this. But the Japanese is, it states you cannot eat it. So if you tried to eat it, something bad would probably happen. But this the English makes you think that you know maybe you could sneak a bite out of there. <laughs> yeah, those model shows, especially now, they always seem to have something for everybody. You know, they have the RC, they have those food like you showed. And of course, they have the models for the the boys and their toys. Uh, now, Ryan, speaking of models, yes, you, you've got one right there? I do, and sadly, as I mentioned earlier, I haven't really worked on him. Um, Typhoons and Tokyo shows. And yeah, and just a general confusion on my part. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what to do with the smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I haven't forgotten about this guy. I will get to him. Yeah. And like my falcon. Somebody brought up the falcon again. Again. But I'm, I'm actually very happy with the colors. You know, gunmetal is a good color. I like I'll it. I'll go wrong with gunmetal. Yeah. I'll probably also, next week, I might actually show um, some masking. Yeah. Um, and I'll probably decide on what I'm going to spray the other runners. Mm -hmm. But um, what I'd like to look at next is actually my Valkyrie. Sure. And do the final transformation. Okay, so uh, here we have my Valkyrie in the Gerwalk mode. It looks hot. Yep, this is obviously the 30th anniversary. <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> Um, now, I said last week that I'll probably do the decals and the, um, the TV show version, mm -hmm. but I've actually gone with the 30th anniversary stickers, because mm -hmm. the stickers were, I think, a little bit more, a little easier and a little less time consuming, and actually, I think they work out fine. Oh, well, they look good to me. Yeah, and you think putting up all these little stickers would take a long time, but it took no time at all. Mm -hmm. And the stickers on the leg was just one big sticker. How awesome is that? That is kind of cool. Um, the, this, the funny thing, this 30th anniversary sticker comes in three parts, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> which was quite fun. And also, you have to just keep in mind that you're not sticking it over any part of this thing that needs to move. Yeah. So I keep that in mind. And I don't think I did that, but we'll see once I transform <laughs> this into the Battleroid mode. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, after spending a bit of time with this guy, I like it. Yeah. I like this color scheme. No, it is cool. I really do. It's... um. It says something to me. I don't know what. Space Olympics? <laughs> it says uh, air show. Air show. <laughs> yeah, air show. Um, you'll see here, like, I have a bunch of stickers left over. And that was just from following their guide. Mm -hmm. So you can really go to town with stickers. I think underneath I could go to town. Yeah. yeah. And here I saw they have a ton of stickers from the TV, TV version. Versions. I did use one on my UN Spacey gun. UN Spacey. UN Spacey. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> I have um, full confidence that we are being handled by the <laughs> most competent individuals in their field, UN Spacey. I hope the UN goes to space and calls itself UN Spacey, because that would just be freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, now, I wanted to just bring a, a kit on into here. Okay. Uh, this is the 30th anniversary -o. anniversary -o. anniversary -o. So this is the, the same actual model, it's just a, this is a model kit and not a figure? Yes, that's correct, and it's called the 30th Anniversario. Anniversario. But it doesn't say that on your plane. No, it does. So, we checked it, it says yeah. anniversary in the yeah. markings. And it has a TH after the 30. Yeah. That's, that's the big thing. But yeah, that's uh, the kit. It's just the plane. It doesn't transform because mm -hmm. uh, that would be tough. Yeah. But just the big thing I wanted to show here was the decal sheet because that's uh, some serious business. Yeah, holy moly. So, you're pretty lucky if you get this guy, even though he's quite a bit more expensive, he's done. Yeah. And, um... I guess if you have confidence in your, confidence in your building slash deckling skill... No. Yeah. You could get a nice plane out of it, actually. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a very cool. I mean, if you wanted to do the plane, I think this plane is like $20 or something. Mm -hmm. And you basically get this without the transformation. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, just keep that in mind. The 30th anniversary. Anniversary. I don't know why they did that. <laughs> Somebody pushed the wrong button. Yeah, the wrong Google Translate. Japanese into something else. So what I'm going to just demonstrate now yeah. is the battle royal mode. Okay. Uh, we'll see how seamless I can do it. All right. Cue the music. 
Don't cue the music yet. <laughs> Let's just see how badly I do. Okay. Now, music okay, well, maybe, I, <laughs> maybe stop the music because I don't remember. Because <laughs> <laughs> the manual. <laughs> oh yeah, let me, um, well, I don't kind of remember. The big thing is to just pull everything apart. Yeah, I'm pretty good at that. Yeah, so you got to pull it apart and uh, okay, yeah, then you got to do this crazy yoga move. You yoga. Oh, look at that. Yeah. yeah it's totally it's yoga. called the uh, dancing dog or the praying flying Dutchman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what's quite cool about this kid is you pop open this nose region here mm -hmm. and there's actually a couple of little pieces that pop down and your leg here, your leg thing will move over there once I do the difficult part of this thing which is smash and grab, pull and Something. Okay, I guess that music is running now. Doom and gloom. That's what I hear when I hear this thing. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's what it's meant to do. Mm -hmm. And then this black thing here protects your windshield. Yeah. So yeah. So this all moves down. Oh, I see. Okay, so you got that. And you got your little head that pops up here and rotates. All right, bing, bing. it's now looking like a robot. It's now looking like a robot. His arms then... Going to jump a jack. Yeah. So he's facing the right way. Yeah. And the good thing is these joints can take quite a bit of punishment. It looks like they they do a move quite a lot. Yeah. Um, and then this clips into... Okay. Then you just... Put a pressure. Okay, we remind everybody that's not what you do when you build a model. Don't use too much pressure. Um, just enough to force it to do things you want it to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> Psychological pressure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not getting it. Sorry. So yeah, so he's there. His legs. It's all meant to seamlessly Put together, okay, okay, I think Houston we have it here. <laughs> and this is when the music will be playing and I'll be like screaming bloody murder. It's always that one thing that seems to yeah, it's hold up the little, step. Yeah, there's a little Okay now we should be goodish. Okay. There I heard it. There we go. Okay, so now we're standing there. Little antennae go up. His wings are folded back. Looks it's, like an insect. Yeah. It's a little clip in the back, so I'll show you that. Little clip. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the guy. And I must say, I I'm really like this guy. I've, as I mentioned, I've never owned one of these. And I can totally understand the fascination. And I still can't believe how they get it to transform into three modes. Yeah, it uh, is pretty cool. To be honest. Um, I still prefer the girl walk. That's my mode. favorite mode too. Yeah. But uh, this guy does actually look good and actually stick it up. Yeah, he's going to take a very... He's going to be the pride of my desk next to my PG. Anniversario. I just want to say it again. Okay, Ryan. I know we've got some, some questions. Well, it's, well, let's actually start with the naming of ah, the yes. Kit Bash. Yes. So there's a few people that have dropped a few more names. Mm -hmm. I Joselle from YouTube said, how about Jubilee or Jubilee Stein? Pronounce mm. Jubilee. Pronounce it as Jubilee. It's a very oh. festive name. Yeah, Jubilee. Jubilee. Let's have a party. Jubilee. Next is Wolf's mm. Fong. He says the Kube Stein version car. Kube Stein. Kube Stein. Kube Stein. Kube Stein. Like Hubert. Shack on the target. <laughs> nice. My suggestion for the name is the Shenanjus Kubstein, or just Kubstein up to you. All right, I'll take that into consideration. Next is Masters DS64. Herm, Quibbly or Shenanju? Shenanjuli. <laughs> Shenanjuli? That's like Brand. I was just going to say the thing. Same thing, Brangelina? Brangelina. Jolie. 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 <laughs> See, these kind of things are everywhere. Stay away from the magazine. <laughs> Uh, next, from Lin Lin Cosplay, how about Haman Khan's custom Shenanju P for 
Pisgarden. Oh man, people are more in imaginative than I thought they <laughs> I'm getting some good suggestions and some crazy suggestions. I'll keep them coming. Yeah, we will, we'll uh, read them out. We'll take them into consideration. Yes, we will, uh, scratch I heads. will probably not be announcing any kind of real like name for it until, until I'm done. Yeah. Because once I see the final product, it's like a baby, Ryan. Yeah. It's like, do you choose ahead of time what your name's going to be? And then you're stuck with it, even though it comes out as a boy and not a girl. I mean, that's an that extreme advantage. <laughs> my, daughter's, my daughter's, my daughter's name is... <laughs> no, but uh, a lot of people like just like with kids, they're like, you know, I'll wait and see what it looks like and then we'll decide that name. You know, I'll yeah, wait and nice. I'll know the name will fit her at that time. Of course, they have these list of possibilities. Yeah. But yeah. So we have a list and that's it's growing. So that's right. On, but I'm not going to name my daughter Kubestein. I would say, do they need to be restricted to the sticking the two names of the kid together? Of course not. Whatever you yeah, want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. It's not like, it's not like a real contest or anything we're just uh, yeah, we're not throwing ideas away Sorry. Join the competition <laughs> uh vic vapors mm -hmm. he said right i want to let you guys know i love your show thank, thank you. you it's really helpful and really fun i've been building gunpla for two years now and i've been really wanting to paint some of my kids for some time can mm -hmm. you tell me whether i should start spray painting or hand painting at my level i have two master grades under my belt and live in a place with open enough space where i can probably spray paint without Problems. Well, if you can spray paint without any kind of problems, you've got the space, then by all means, get, get paint. Don't, don't hand brush it. Hand brushing is good for like details and tiny areas, but it usually seems to be the last resort of people who are, for some reason, unable to actually use any kind of spraying device. Mm. So, but if you are able to, you have space, like I said, and you can use a can, use an airbrush, do it, do it that way. Yeah. It, you'll, you'll save yourself a lot of time, and it will look that much better. Yeah. Next, General Rosp. Hey guys, great episode. The music during the match was transformation was hilarious. You like that? Since baby. I went on the internet. Yeah. I knew I know a website where I take music from for various videos and whatever else. And I wanted something funny, so I typed in like comedy and instrumental, and then the, the very first thing I clicked on was that. And it so matched your little click 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 perfectly at the start and I didn't have to touch anything. And you might have heard that same music in this episode as well. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe <laughs> Depending on how your transformation went. <laughs> I have a question about applying the water slides. Mm -hmm. I think it's talking about what I was doing. Yeah. I'm assuming that you would need to gloss top coat then to prevent them from falling off or damage. Mm -hmm. Would you top coat figures like that any differently than you would a Gundam model to keep up the good work? Uh, well, generally for any kind of like water slide deco, you're going to follow that process yeah. of that gloss to top coat and then the deco and then whatever top coat to secure the deco and protect it. So even if you're doing a figure, yeah, you should probably do the, the gloss top coat approach. Maybe do a flat coat um, mm. a figure. I use stickers, so I'm probably not going to worry too much. Mm -hmm. uh, next, I'm Gus. Hey guys, a bit off topic, but I've searched around and I couldn't find anything like this. Maybe you guys could help me out. Maybe you know of a site or app that lets you choose Gundam colors to see how they might look with mm. custom colors. I can't seem to decide on the color scheme and I feel like actually seeing the color might help. Please let me know. Thanks. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Everybody wishes they had that kind Is of thing. Is there an app? Well, let, let me get to that. Um, there's line art for the first part is somewhat easy to find if you go on the internet or you can get these hobby magazines that we have here. You can get the line art, make a photocopy, grab a pencil, and you can kind of go around with it. That's the approach that most people take. However, uh, the Gundam Australia Forum, mm -hmm. which we sponsor, which we reverence every now and then, one of the guys on there who's very computer savvy mm -hmm. has developed uh, a color oh, generator, yeah, yeah. but uh, because of the time it takes to actually put in the line arts and whatever, I think he's only got two or three uh, models at this time mm -hmm. that you can go in there and actually uh, try out different color schemes on. I think he's got the uh, new Gundam version Ka, maybe the Delta Plus, I can't remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. but I mean, he's done some good work there, and so I'm sure Gundam if there's Australia Gundam Dogs. Australia for him. Yes. I'll try and find the link yeah. just for that uh, line art generator and then people can kind of play around with it that way. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Next is John from the Hobby Link TV blog, uh, from uh, the Gumpler TV group. Nice, mm -hmm. Ryan. Good job, and I have a question. Like, mm -hmm. like you, this like was... You, this was Robotech, which I saw around the mid to late 90s. Mm. 90s. 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 My question to you is, is in episode one to nine, if I heard right, Yamato went out of business. Is there any way to get those or in, or is this Macross just the same as the Yamato? I happen to be looking mm. for either the Rick Hunter one or the Skull one. Um, 
I think uh, the company mm -hmm. who took over from Yamato, the name escapes me. Arcadia. Arcadia. Um, is re-releasing a lot of the Yamato stuff? I, I'm not sure all of the details, yeah. but I think that uh, they're all part of one parent company. Mm -hmm. And I think Yamato kind of got shut down for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And Arcadia is moving in, but Arcadia is, has access to everything mm -hmm. that the Yamato side did. And I, that's why we're, I think we're seeing these kind of re-releases in similar. And uh, you can expect from me some more of these kind of uh, Valkyries. Mm -hmm. Because I'm actually quite interested to see the difference between the older Yamato stuff and mm -hmm. the current stuff. So, uh, yeah. you know, we'll find out together. There you go. Now, um, that's all I have for questions today. Okay. Um, I just want to remind everyone, we have a Facebook page and a YouTube channel. Yep. And our blog, and we have the competition running. If you guys can just uh, leave any comments or questions there. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have anything to add? Uh, next week I'll be actually be showing a Gundam because I've got my, oh, my I'll be painting that uh, gold frame and I will hopefully have the next part of the kit bash done. Yep. And we'll also be showing the uh, Strike Rouge, which I believe is coming out the next MG. So you can look forward to that. Until then, see you later.